we've been through all of the rigmarole of the pipeline, the, all of the complicated operations moving from local space to world space to view space, collapsing our objects down to a 2D plane, clipping them, and then generating pixels, deciding which pixels to keep, and which pixels to throw away. So the main question now is, how do we colour the pixels in? What, what do we do with the pixels? What we generally want to do if we're trying to replicate reality is do some sort of lighting equations at every pixel. Um, so for every pixel we run a little program that does these kind of computations um, that will give a point on a surface and the normal at that point and some other information about the surface, maybe the material properties, and information about the light source, where the light source is relative to the surface, what colour the light is, what direction the light is coming in, how the light attenuates, and so on and so forth. With all of these inputs, we can finally generate a shaded value to say, well, this is well lit, or it's, in, it's, it's facing away from the light, so it's in shade, and so on and so forth. The equations that we do, the, um, the computation of the light value at every pixel is local. It's local to the surface that we're lighting. Because in all of our uh, work that we've done getting down to pixels, we're not really um, holding on to any other, other information about this, the rest of the scene. We only know about the one object that we're working with at a time. So we only know about the pixels on the surface of this object. We don't know, for example, if there is another object here blocking the lights reaching this object. So we can't account for that in our simple light model at this pixel. So in older computer graphics, when you look at them, you'll often see that actually you can see these local light models in action and the lack of shadows is quite apparent. How then do we get that information? How do we get that global information to augment our local light model and, for example, render shadows? How do we decide that this point on the surface is being occluded by another object somewhere else in the scene? And the answer to that, or one solution, is to go back to our friend the depth buffer. Um, the depth buffer, as we'll remember, is um, a representation at every pixel of the depth of that pixel in the scene. What we can do is we can render the scene, not from the camera's point of view, but from the point of view of the light. Rather than rendering shaded pixels, however, we just output the depth buffer values. So what we end up with is a buffer of data containing the depth, per pixel depth, from the position of the light. Why is that a useful thing to have? Well, what we've done really is we've rephrased the question. We're not saying, is uh, such a pixel um, in light or shade? We're saying, is such a pixel visible to the light? Because if a pixel is visible to the light, then it's being illuminated. If it's not visible to the light, then it's in shadow. It will probably be clearer to actually cast some shadows and demonstrate <laughs> this. There we go. Did we get a good shadow on that? Oh, no, not really. That's a bit better, isn't it? Right, so we have our scene, a simple pyramid. We'll incorporate the table into this because this is where the shadow is being cast. So the table is another 3D object in our 3D world and we want to shade a point here. So for that, not only do we need to know properties of the surface at this point, um, the normal and the, uh, the material properties and the direction of the light and so on and so forth. But we also want to know whether it's in light or in shade. So how do we determine that? The shading of, of a pixel is local and we don't have information about the rest of the scene. So we can't know um, whether or not a certain point is being occluded by another object in the scene. We don't know whether it's in shadow or not. To solve that problem, we use a two-step process that involves the Z-buffer. First of all, though, we render the scene from the point of view, not of the camera, but of the light. 
what we do is we record not colour information, but depth information, exactly as we would do in normal rendering. In other words, we render into the depth buffer and we record at every pixel exactly how far away every pixel is from the point of view of the light. And we save that information in a buffer for use later. Then, when we come to render the scene from the point of view of the camera, we take this point here and we project it out of world space, where it is, into light space. So what we know then is exactly how far away the point that we're shading is from the point of view of the light. What we can then do is do a lookup into the Z buffer from the light pass that we rendered before and we can find out how far away that point is from the light and compare it to the value in the Z buffer. So in this case we find that the depth from the light at this point is further than the depth from the front face of the pyramid here. Therefore, it's in shadow and we don't need to do our lighting here or we need to incorporate that information into our lighting equations. So if we add another light, that's not done anything at all, but in theory we can have as many lights as we like. Um, Let there be light. But plenty anyway, <laughs> yeah. So in theory we can have as many lights as we like as long as we are prepared to render the scene again and again from the point of view of every light so that we have enough information when we come to uh, shade in the pixels to be able to do that lockup and say is this uh, pixel um, in shadow from this particular light or is it being illuminated and in modern games and things like that now we can have multiple lights because we can afford to render the scene multiple times from multiple perspectives in order to build up that uh, that information. However, um, if you look back just maybe 10 or 15 years at older games and things like that, you tend only to have one shadow casting light or maybe not even any at all because rendering or hundreds of thousands of, of triangles every single frame is expensive um, in terms of time and uh, so it's sometimes better just to accept the quality loss and not have any shadows uh, rather than go for complete realism <laughs> and often actually you find that a single shadow um, looks much better than no shadows at all but two or three shadows only looks marginally better than one shadow it's a law of diminishing returns it is a law of diminishing returns we'd like to thank audible.com for their support of this computer file video and if you'd like to download one of their huge range of books go to audible.com slash computer file and you can sign up and download one for free. I'd like to recommend a book called Bad Science by Ben Goldacre and for those of you interested in science it's fantastic. It shows how science is misused in the media and debunks some common interesting practices such as homeopathy, that's my favourite part. So get onto audible.com slash computer file, uh, sign up, download a free book and thanks to them again for supporting this computer file video. And when you click that go button, so it's not going to my awesome blog, it goes to the really badly designed online bank, which promptly um, says, oh, we've got a request. And in general it works, because uh, the majority of scenes uh, com are composed mostly of opaque objects that are amenable to Z-testing. 